Welcome, one and all. This is Justin Sweet, a.k.a. <clears throat> Agent Zero, a.k.a. Uh, Perro Hikama, <laughs> J-Dog <laughs> in the house. Anyway, I thought I'd play some um, some Sega Genesis today. I figure I'll just, I don't know, got nothing else better to do. I might as well hang out and play some fun games while I'm doing my thing. Let's see. I don't know if I should be doing this like full screen or maybe it'll be easier for me to navigate if it's not. I don't know, but we'll see. So yeah, we're going to rock some Shining Force again. So I did my whatnot last night. Was not exactly successful in my humble opinion. <laughs> um, yeah. Had a guy complaining about the taxes, or not t not taxes, uh, how much the shipping was. There we go, quick load. Yeah. Not sure if that's too loud. Hopefully it's not. But, um, there we go. Okay. It lets me go in between. Oh, but when it, yeah, when I click, of course, the sound goes away. Yay. Oh, I love stream yards. Anyway, um, as I was. Um, so I was doing the, the whatnot campaign. It was, um, I had a, a person complaining about the shipping. Never mind that shipping costs what it costs. Um, and whatnot, they pretty much have you put, you know, your, your, um, the weight in and then they calculate it based on weight. So there really wasn't anything I could do about that except maybe lower the, the weight and take a hit because um, you know whatnot is just an auction site so it's almost like eBay you know kind of like lowballing the shipping on eBay and not making any money whatsoever um, so needless to say last night was a was a flop because I was trying to sell floppies <laughs> never mind that I don't have any that have lewds I don't have any floppies that have you know that are key issues or you know uh, everything that I have is pretty much uh, normally relegated to like the the 50 cent or dollar bin but I mean that's just you know that's how I roll um, or everything that I have to sell let me say um, but at the same time I don't know I think it's just one of those things where maybe if I bundle them people will be interested in buying them but regardless I think I think comics Comics are not what I need to be selling on, um, on whatnot, but that's my opinion. Not sure if you want to see my ugly mug or not. Let me see how this works. I can go picture in picture. Yeah, that works. That's better. Yeah. Um, Chris to the rescue. And, uh, but yeah, I just... I don't know, I just felt like streaming. I thought, you know, I want to play this game. This is probably one of the boringest battles in the entire game, if I'm honest. Um, and I'll, sh here, let me show you why. Watch this. So, okay, so we started over here in this town. Uh, the town of Rindo, I believe it is, right? 
it's right here on the water um there's actually you, you can't see it here in this view but there's like a boat out here that we don't we don't yet have access to and so i have to fight my way I have to destroy these these enemies here's all these enemies and then up here to get over to this town right well the, as you'll soon see the movement for each of my guys is just so just oh through this area is oh it's so boring so i'm almost tempted to change it up a little bit i don't know um but there's really not much i can do about it because even if i come all the way over here i mean there reaches a point where the enemies will, will start coming at me um because they love to attack the leader or my leader so which is this guy that's my leader his name is max um i can name him whatever i want but I mean, according to the lore, his actual name is Max, so I'm one of those. One of those people, sometimes when I play games like this, I like to stay that name. Um, dun, dun. And um, also, I want to point out, I don't know if I brought it up, but this, uh, this Steam version of um, the Sega Classics, or Mega Drive Classics, um, you know, it has... It does this blending um, of the pixels, so it almost looks painted. And if you can see, there's scan lines. I went ahead and like added the scan lines because that it it kind of gives it the illusion of of what it would be like playing on a television, um, but a little a little clearer because of the, um, the the painted pixels. And if the scan lines weren't there, it it, it I don't know. It's it's almost like a like moving art <laughs> um, when you play it, which I mean, you know, it's not a bad idea, but I just I like seeing the scan lines. Uh, Gong can go here. Oh, <sighs> my archer. So what happened last time? Uh, and all of this took place off 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 um, off stream, but I tried this battle once before. And my dumb self decided that I was going to use, which right now I'm, this is a, a risky move because if my leader goes down, my whole like the, the battle's over and then we start over. But but anyway, I I started the battle battle over because I gave a magic ring to one of my my guys and they um, we'll let Ken finish him off because um, he's got a spear attack that goes through my my. Uh, my leader and then on to the enemy but uh anyway so i was i was trying to um use this ring that i got it's called the speed ring and i forgot that if you use the speed speed ring it doesn't actually speed you up um it 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 casts what's called a uh an egress spell which means uh you like instantly leave the battle you get teleported to um basically the last town you were in and then that's it and i i almost had the battle completely sewn up which like i said it is easily one of the most boring battles in the entire game so i get i have this to look forward to and then these giant bats are there's there's a bs <laughs> um I mean, because you, you saw that, like, there was no no damage, no nothing. And, of course, you know, he's going to try to kill my my leader. Uh, and he's not going to succeed. <laughs> Hardy little booger. All right, let's see. I'll get him in. So, um, so Gort is a, he's a dwarf as well. So, dwarf on dwarf action here. They're attacking each other. Boom. All right. He leveled up to level five. We're finally getting Gort up to level, uh, to the same level as Luke. Um, cause Luke is, well, let me just sec here. Boom. Ah, one damage. Nothing. Your ax means nothing to me. All right. So this guy, here, let me show you. Um, so here's the item I was, I was, um, the speed ring here so it gives them an agility 14 but when i go to use it um 
when I go to actually use it, it, <laughs> it spits me back in town. Stops the battle, and then I get to start the stupid charade all over again. But, what can you do? You know, and I, I, I want to... I, I played the beginning of this game so much that I just I wish I could just progress to the end without having to do all this grueling, you know, brum, 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 you know, all the way through. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Because I, I like the other music, you know. That's part of the fun. But as far as um, like the combat in this game, um. I'm trying to think. I, I can't think of many other games that have the same way of, um, of re resolving the conflict. You know, as you can tell, like, there's no, there's no on the fly. So, I mean, it, it's so different than Final Fantasy. Um, I don't even think that it was, I mean, uh, Fire Emblem maybe comes close, but even then, I don't think it's close enough. Um, Hold on, that was Luke. I think Luke is level six, so Gort's got a little bit. He's got a little bit more to go. Okay, here we go. Bat's coming down. May. I gotta get her leveled up. She's weak. And by the way, she's a knight. Um, and the the lore in this game, the knights are always this, they're centaurs. So, like, knights don't ride horses. I don't even think that horses exist in this game. Um, if they do, like, we don't ever see them. Well, that's not true. I, I mean, we don't really... Like, I've, I've seen a horse-drawn buggy kind of thing, but it wasn't... Um, there we go. Good gravy. Yes, sir. Did you see that? He whacked him for ten points. Kapow. That's what I'm talking about. Dwarven power, yo. Oh yeah. See, so he 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 wants to whack the. Now sometimes it's extremely rare, but sometimes they get a counter attack. Oh my gosh, low. He's level three. I'll let him pop him. Try to pop him. We'll see. Ah, yeah, he he evaded. Whoa, he got a second strike, and he he actually did eleven points of damage. That's almost unheard of with low. Well. I was gonna try to get get her to finish off the bat, but now look at that! She got two strikes in. Did you see that? Man, I'm on a roll. Heck yeah! Um, I'll let Tao finish her finish them off. You know, that's the thing too. Oh, of course, she's not gonna finish them off. Because the bat's too tricksy. Um, we'll put him here. Whack him. Crack. Crack. Oh. Hans, he's um, <clears throat> he's one of two archers, so I think that's uh, that's the only like. There's a um, an archer later on. Her name is Diane. She's got pink hair, um, and like it's 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 funny. There's there's no real like classes in this game. It just seems like races. So so like all centaurs are gonna be knights, um, and they're nothing else but knights. Um, You know, and then you got like all dwarves or warriors. <clears throat> My leader, I think he's the only. Well, he's not the only fighter. Um, <sighs> hmm. All right, I guess we'll go up the middle. It's boring. It's gonna take forever. Ugh, those zombies, man. Yeah, that's right. Get on up, get on up in there. Gort for the win. All right. See, so we're doing good here in the grass. 
But once we get in that daggum on that on that hard top. It's just gonna just take forever. <sighs> and it always has to check to see if they want to move. And the AI is like, nope, we're good. The enemy, you know, the the leader isn't isn't uh, isn't trying to face us, so we're good. Luke, get him up there in the front lines. She needs to get up there so she can uh, see. So he, well, they got an evil archer, a sniper, with a ballista, basically. Crack! Yeah, 1.8. Good luck. Hmm. Get Gord up there. Come on, Gord. You got this. Whack him. Nice one. Look at that. One strike. Maybe we can get him to level up to six during this battle, so that way he and Luke will be, you know, closer. And uh, once you get people up to level 20, um, then they can do what's called promote. Like, they, you can promote them, and they can, they change, um, their class changes. And their weapon style changes, like everything changes on them. Man, I love this game. They really knew what they were doing when they made it, for sure. Um, and I want to say it's Camelot. I think Camelot made it. And uh, Camelot is, they, I believe they're responsible for uh, Golden Sun. And Golden Sun, I mean, it's it's a fun game. Um, totally different mechanics. I have no idea why he didn't cast a spell. That mage should have cast a big spell, and he did not. That is crazy. Crazy town. Alright, well, here we go. So, speaking of crazy town, um, Kamala Khan, <laughs> am I right? Um,. Aw, oh, man. He took her out, or took took that mage out like Kamala Khan. Um, but no, seriously. Um, I don't really, you know, I know that's the topic du jour. Um, I'm just, I'm so over the, the, the dumb storylines and the crazy, like, I don't know. Some, some of the unforgivable things that Marvel is doing. Um, and to me, like, The whole like Miss Marvel Kamala Khan thing, like it was never to me. It was never really a thing anyway. You know, and anytime you bring up um, Carol Danvers, you know, retaining any anything having to do with Miss Marvel, you know, it was like me. Every time I would bring it up, uh, people would say that I was like super thirsty or whatever, and it's like whatever. Not. It's just what happened to sex appeal in comics. You know, and you know, not only that, like, I kind of agree with people regarding her power set, um, Kamala Khan's power set. Like, why is she bendy and plastic and stuff like, um, Mr. Fantastic? Um, I also wondered why she was always like hanging around Lockjaw, which I mean, I get it. Like, in the early days, she was a you know, an inhuman. But even that's even that's something. Like, why change? Like, that that'd be like saying, "Oh yeah, well, you know, we're, you know, oh well, you know, my bad. Uh, Wolverine is now an Inhuman instead of a mutant." Like, what? You know that that'd be like me saying, "Oh yeah, uh, Chrome Dog is now just some dude in a suit." You know, <laughs> just kidding. Um, it's like no. And, oh, and and that suit transforms into like a toaster. <laughs> You know, it's like, talk about uncharacteristically bad. Like, it has nothing to do with the character or what he's about or who he is or what he is as a person or a cyber being or whatever. Because he's none of those things. He's just a guy who got trapped inside a, um, 
this advanced technology suit from you know a bygone era that's it that is that is all he is um and for me to for me to fiddle with that or for me you know and that's the thing too right like if i were to i don't want to i'm going to use medical herb on myself um but like for me to give up the rights to my own character and to see some other writer come in and just totally like screw him up like that i would be beside myself um and so i wonder you know who i can't remember who it was that um that actually came up with kamala khan but i think like if it were me and again I, you know they're always killing characters they're killing them off you know bringing them back and whatever oh great i guess we get to start this stupid battle over again yep oh well close enough oh yay yeah okay well <laughs> start it over yay joy yeah bye bye it's okay at least i gained all that experience in that fight and i don't have to revive him Oh, Gort did die. That's right. So this is this is what it is to resurrect people. You gotta pay the church money, and then they're just like, "Oh yeah, we'll we'll bring them back to life." Um, just in case we need someone that cures, no one's hurts, no one's poison. Uh, no, we're good. <sighs> All right, back at it, I guess. See, start over. But we we have all that experience so it's not for nothing and i know i know everybody there's a lot of people streaming right now but i don't let it bother me <laughs> i'm still trying to I'm, I'm still trying to understand how um this is supposed to work you know, we we're we're all in one big group. Um, I've you know I've got several of you out there that have backed my book, and I really appreciate you. And I certainly am looking to uh, get some more backers. Um, I'm really looking forward to getting the art up, uh, getting more more pages up so that I can show them off. Uh, Luke's been extremely busy with uh, fun my comic as well as. Um, what let's see uh rift riders you know getting that fulfilled i know he's you know i know he's got coming up um he's got the hybrids um trade paperback and the role-playing game and all that that he's fulfilling and all that jazz um but you know money has changed hands thanks to you know you guys funding me so i mean it's just a matter of time before pages start rolling in and uh and then you know and then i start um getting you know getting them to where they need to be and getting them colored and this and that and believe me i'll be showing you guys um i have no problem doing that um but yeah until then i'm just keeping a low profile kind of doing my thing um i definitely enjoy it when people you know show up and chat I just do this just to hang out. I mean, if I if I want to do it, I might as well do it. Do this on stream, you know. Of course, I'm only gonna be on for about an hour. Here, by the way, just wanted to show you how do I. Here, we'll just pause this for a sec. Um, I wanted to show you... Uh, stop screen. Okay. So this right here is my whatnot setup uh, over there. Um, and I got my little arm. I put my little camera on there to kind of show showcase what I'm, you know, what I'm auctioning off. I got these, uh, these uh, Alterna... Um, 
these are the reader copies. Um, I've been enjoying these books. Um, this one, this one actually took me by surprise. Um, it should still be available on alterna.com. At least I think that's his website. Uh, maybe it's alterna.comics or alternacomics.com. Um, but, um, yeah, like it, it was hard to get into, but once it took off, I was just like, oh yeah, okay, I'm totally there. And then by the time at the end, I didn't want it. I didn't want it to end. <laughs> and then it was over. I'm like, no. Um, so and I've got several of them in shrink wrap that I'm, you know, I'm trying to get, trying to get sold over on, um, on whatnot. And of course, um, in the description, you'll see, you know, I've got the stuff having to do with uh, Chrome Dog and whatnot, but I've also got Smash Masters. Um, this game is a lot of fun. I finally got a chance to get it on the table uh, last week um, at game night at work. And uh, by the way, it's from my buddy John, um, John over at Dark Unicorn Games. His name's John O'Neill. Um, he's a he's a real cool dude. Um, he's from my, uh, my Firefly days. Um, I'm still very much, you know, a part of that community. I just don't really, I don't post much. Um, cause you know, I don't know. I hate to say that I'm over it, but at the same time, I'm just tired. You know, I'm, I'm tired of being disappointed when it comes to Firefly and, um, and whatnot. Um, you know, so, wow, this, this damn camera is like what are you doing to me? Um, but, uh, but yeah, as you can see, we got little team up cards. You got super cards, uh, or smash cards. Sorry. Um, the super cards are with the heroes, but these story cards, they do different things, uh, change the board state. It's a very fast game. I was amazed at how quickly you can either win or lose this game. Um, and the mechanics is almost like war. If you've ever played war, um, it kind of has like it's not from the beginning, but it definitely has that feel like um, like uh, the, the war game that you play with um, with standard deck of playing cards. But um, but these are these are just some of the heroes um, I've got. You know, I've actually opened both the uh, core set and the um, and I can't remember which heroes are from which. Uh, here I'll just uh, select a couple here or three of them so so like there's queen of diamonds right and then this is her super um and so they you know they kind of go in your deck with you and then that's ghost pirate and his super and whatnot um and so i keep all the heroes and their super separate for for when i build decks but these are all pretty much uh similar uh if not the same deck building is extremely easy in this game um because the game itself is not really it's not really about building a deck it's just about like you know, throwing down against your opponent and, you know, may the, may the best team of uh, superheroes win. So, but, uh, but yeah, I just wanted to, but yeah. And if you want to check that out, um, there's a link in the description for the fun, my comic. Um, uh, well, shoot, I guess I could show you. Um, let me see. Get this over here. Wait, nope, not that. There we go. Boop, boop, boop. And I gotta hit uh, F11. And then find my comic. Boom. But yeah, and thanks to you know, thanks to several people out there. Like they're they're starting to buy in on this thing. Um, and you know, uh, uh, there's a portion, a large portion of the proceeds helps me. Uh, you know, helps me with, uh, with funding Chrome dog. So, you know, if you guys can, um, can back it and these, uh, also these kind of, you know, they ship immediately. Um, matter of fact, you know, I've got someone who placed an order, uh, on here overnight. So I need to get his, uh, get his package up and going, uh, for today. Let me, uh, let me see if I can, I'm going to stop and I'm going to present share the screen again and this time i'm going to do it with audio that way we can hear the the wonderful trailer um let's see here and then we will go like this i am the spectator i am he who spectates 
I scoured the universe in search of a very special card game. Well, I skipped the Crab Nebula because you, you. But now my search is over. Ever wish you could share your love of comics and superheroes and collectible card games with your whole family? Now you can with Superpower Smash Masters. It's your friendly neighborhood superhero parody card game. In Super Powered Smash Masters, or Spasm, Spasm? Can we see that? Inappropriate. In Spasm, you assemble teams of heroes and build decks around what your heroes can do. And what is it they do, you ask? Protect the innocent? Stamp out injustice? No, we go find some rival heroes to smash. Yes, because that's what superheroes do. Tell them about the hero cards and do it right. Uh, each hero has a special power. They can benefit your team or they can melt your enemy's faces. Right on. If your heroes smash all the other heroes, you win, punk. Don't call them that. The game's content is appropriate for kids. I mean, most kids. Not feral kids. Never hand your cards to a feral kid. Not if you want your hand back. Well, this is a parody game, lovingly crammed, full of comic book cliches and pop culture references. Because we're nerds. The content's rated G. I mean, it would be if people rated card games. It's a deck building game the whole family can play together. Thanks for checking out our game. We're grateful for your support. Learn more about Smash Masters by checking out our gameplay video. Do it. Until next time, don't say it. Excelsior! Oh, and by the way, that David Joseph Wesley, um, he's a uh, he's a um, composer, um, and he he did the music for well, he did the music for what would have been um, Firefly Online, um, but that all got um, got the plug pulled. So anyway. <laughs> I guess that's a picture of John there um, unboxing Spasm uh, Super Powered Smash Masters. Uh, but yeah, um, this, you know, as it says here, this is not a crowdfunding campaign. All rewards associated with this campaign uh, are available to ship upon purchasing. So as soon as you place your order, we, you know, I do my very best to kind of get it in the mail the next day, uh, if possible. Um, and so, you know, this first tier, this is like the initial tier. It's also known as the new recruits. Um, you get, uh, oh boy, what do you get? <laughs> maybe, maybe I should put it in the, in the thing, but you, you actually get a total of 92 cards. So you get 12, uh, 12 heroes. So yeah. Okay. So the new recruits, you get 12 heroes, the core box, you get 24 heroes. So if you put them both together, you have 36 total heroes that you can then build your decks from, um, in this initial you can just buy just this box the new recruits it's a standalone expansion so you can play just with these heroes um and you can play up to two players because uh, it has enough cards for um for you know two smash decks um and then you know then if you want you can go into the core set or you can go full on and just get them both um you know you can i call it the the smash masters deluxe which means you get the core set and you get the new recruit set so um so yeah i mean uh it's you know you kind of get in where you fit in um but um yeah a pretty significant portion like i said does go towards uh chrome dog um and chrome dog uh, associated activities such as you know um those you know different uh items associated with that campaign that i'm, I'm i've got in the works so um ages eight and up so but yeah yeah it's it's pretty pretty darn fun um and it's not it's not overly complex matter of fact i, I caught myself um when we were playing me and a buddy of mine i caught myself trying to overcomplicate it um like overthinking so so um so yeah <sighs> so that's the thing that's um that's certainly one to watch one to you know, want to kind of look into, um, cause you know, you're in a, in a, 
in a, in a way you're helping, you're kind of sort of in an offhand way, you're backing Chrome dog <laughs> um, while getting something fun to play with your family or your friends. So, I mean, you know, it's pretty, pretty darn cool. Um, let's go. There we go. Um, so I just wanted to kind of show that off. Well, hello there, duck bacon. <laughs> I'm glad you can make it. You just you just kind of missed my presentation, I think. Um, I uh, I just got through showing um, the Smash Masters game that's available on uh, Fun My Comic. Um, I kind of just gave my, my my rough pitch about it. <laughs> it's a fun little card game um, that uh, I just happen to have lots of copies of. A buddy of mine in uh, in Arizona, not Arizona. I got my brain is fried. Um, let me see if I can throw this comment up here. Maybe it'll. I know as soon as I click, it's gonna be like what? But yeah, hail hail duck bacon. Um, there we go. But um, yeah, his, his name's John O'Neill. He he has a company called Dark Unicorn Games over in uh, North Carolina, not Arizona. Um, hmm. I think I'm gonna attack from the bridge. I really want to get her leveled up, but um, but anyway, he um, he and I were were buddies from uh, from Firefly Online, which was a defunct game that he uh, he was actually a developer on uh, with Spark Plug Games. Um, they're around. Um, I, th I know that they're known for Mech Runner. I'm trying to think of other games that they that they produce that are you know like mobile games and, and uh, video games and stuff. But um, but yeah, he's produced this really fun you know card game, and uh, I just happened you know he he sent me several copies that I could take to sh uh, like like show shows and whatnot and sell them. Um, and I've had them ever since, and we kind of have a you know a deal worked out where you know i retain a certain percentage and then i send uh the rest of, of the funds on to him and uh so it's worked out pretty well and so those so essentially if you if you back that campaign not only you know am i able to just go ahead and send you a copy of smash masters um but um you know in whichever form you want um but you know you're also helping contribute to chrome dog so um and you know like to me it's one of those things some some people are just not really into comics and so you know they want to they want to collect a card you know they want to play a card game or they want to have a i mean because it's it's a card game but it's it's a not not collectible it's you know it's like a board game experience in a way it's like it's a standalone so you don't have to worry about you know future expansions at least or wanting to try to keep up because I know right now they only have the one expansion called the new recruits and again those are on all on the campaign but anyway I'm sure he didn't he didn't show up to to hear all about that so <laughs> um, I'm curious like what what are your thoughts duck about uh, Kamala Khan uh, dying and spider-man or do you even have any thoughts you're more of a witcher watcher oh oh a watcher of anything or <laughs> you just you just watch people play play any game whether it's a video game or or card games Ugh. Oh, Kamala who? Yeah, right. Well, yeah, there, I mean, of course, it's funny. There's Kamala Harris, too, you know, Kamala Harris, <laughs> that some people I hear refer to. Ugh, I did not want this to happen. These people, oh, these stupid enemies. All right, well, it's up to the leader. He's going to be the one to, like, charge through and just take them out. Get it done. But yeah, no, I'm with you on that, man. It's like they really jumped the shark with with you know creating her as a character, making her Miss Marvel. I think that was the first mistake. I mean, yeah, sure. I mean, create whatever character you want, but like, 
I mean, it's not even a mantle. She doesn't have, like, it's not a power set. It wasn't, it, like, she has Miss Marvel, like, her version of Miss Marvel has nothing to do with Carl Manvers. I mean, Carol Danvers. Um, she just, like, there's nothing um, to do with her. Um, I mean, and so, uh, anyway, I, I guess TV show too. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I never, I never watched the TV show. It's not really my in my demographic. But I, I you know, even if even if it was right, um, they really they lost me. Um, I tried to hang in there. I watched. Um, let's see. I started with Wandavision. I was kind of hyped for that and was disappointed. I mean, little like I don't know. Some of it was just, like I thought. What was such BS was you know they they hint at uh, Monica Rambeau's mom being like the original photon, which is, I thought that was kind of interesting. But then you know her powers get get either unlocked or she gains powers by going through the Nexus. You know, in that town that um, Wanda had under control, and I was like, that just didn't feel right to me. Um, and then let's see, I stuck in there through, let's see, from WandaVision, what was next? Oh, yeah, um. Oh boy, yeah. So the the uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier, Captain Falcon, like what? And you know, and the thing is, I wanted to really like that show, but there was a few things that I just couldn't get over. Um, I think the big the big thing was um, here. I need to be putting putting these comments up. <laughs> um, but uh, let me just finish this thought. The the biggest thing that I couldn't get over in. Um, in the Falcon and Winter Soldier was that they were just straight killing people, you know, just like throwing them out of hel helicopters. And you know, you're out in the they're they're out in the desert and they're just throwing them throwing them out of helicopters into rocks. I mean, they're these 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 fools are dying out there. You know, what's heroic about that? Um, Arnie, so Duck, Duck Bacon says, all my life I would watch every uh, everything. I even own Jennifer Garner Electra. But recently, I can't do it. Hey, I'm with you there, man. And, you know, I really, I wanted to see, um, yeah, I watched it once back when it was, you know, it was fresh. Um, I'd like to watch it again, to be honest. Um, I, I do remember, I, I liked Daredevil. The only the only thing I hated about the, the Daredevil movie, I felt like he was unmasking way too much. But then again, you know, I don't know, like... <sighs> The, the Netflix show does it, so maybe that's just what Daredevil does in the comics. <laughs> um, but uh, regardless, I mean, it was that was back when comics were still fun, you know. Now nothing's fun, you know. Nothing's funny. Uh, nothing's fun, and no wonder we got a whole generation that loves this. Um, what do you call it? Uh, my son, he really likes these uh, surrealistic shows, and the humor is in the, it, you know, is is very um, gallows. You know, it, it it's a it's a there's a certain level of um, humor associated with death that um, that they take uh, you know take joy in, and I you know on the one hand yeah like that I think gallows humor will always be funny, um, but I'm with you on that. He says. Uh, Duck, Duck Bacon says, uh, too agenda driven now. Um, yeah, exactly. And, and, you know, what, what I think is going to happen, so many people are saying, oh, the pendulum is swinging the other way. I, you know, I don't, I don't think there is a pendulum. Um, I really think that, uh, they're Hollywood slowly coming to the, to the, uh, awakening that they left us. Um, and we're going to, we're just going to be out here doing our own thing. Um, oh man, low, no, <laughs> I, you know, I, and I, I can't help but shake or I can't help but feel, I can't shake the feeling that, um, humans are just gonna wake up one day and we're just, we're all like collectively going to take our phones, our technology, and we're just going to throw it away. 
we're gonna we're gonna come to our senses one day when that you know the spell's gonna be broken. We're just finally gonna say, okay, that's enough. You've you've manipulated us uh, for for long enough with this junk, and we're done. I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm maybe I'm just naive. Maybe maybe it's wishful thinking. Um, but I just I, f I feel like technology has invaded so much of our daily lives. I mean, I, of all the games that I could be playing right now, I've chosen this game from when I was 12 years old. <laughs> I mean, that that ought to say something, you know? Um, and this, uh, and I was I was saying earlier, um, this battle is th this is the this is the the most boring battle. Uh, of this entire game. Um, I mean, it, it just is. Like, and a while ago, I, I made a, a false calculation in my, um, or bad calculation, I should say, in my, put my leader too far forward, and he got got. And when he died, the battle was over, and I got to start over. But, you know, it is what it is. So the zombies, and, uh, <sighs> And then, uh, I guess, you know, thinking about what's going on with the Frank Miller situation. I mean, Duke can draw whatever he wants, as far as I'm concerned. And if, and if editorial says, yeah, let's rock with it, then, psh, hey, hey th their money's good, too. <laughs> I mean, and, you know, okay. Um, I'm not buying it. I don't buy any uh, Marvel. Uh, I don't buy any mar modern Marvel comics. Um I only have um, uh, a recent dare, uh, Daredevil with me. A recent Deadpool because a buddy of mine bought it for me. Um, and even now I'm trying to get rid of it. Um, it's one of the bad, bad blood uh, breakout issues. But I, I just, I'm just not there for it anymore. I like going back and looking at old, um, old indie comics. Um, and of course, I can I can show you uh, what I'm talking about, Duck. If you're still if you're still around, if, I mean that's if you're if you're here for comics. Um, <laughs> I just I just realized sometimes the screen flashes like the whole screen does, and I should probably like give some sort of epilepsy warning. <laughs> Maybe not. I don't know. Um, okay, cool. All right. Yeah, because this, this battle is boring the heck out of me. <laughs> and I got 12 minutes left. So yeah, maybe since uh, since you showed up, I'll, I'll uh, see what I can... I'll do a quick save, and then we will pause that there. And I will I will resume that. I will spare you guys any any and all headache having to watch that stuff. Um, let me see here, let me get my arm going here, uh, bear with me here. Let's, let's, to prevent some, um, what, what do you call it? Um, what's it called? Dead. Hey. I'm going to set this up, and then I will show you this comic book.
Well, next time, maybe. Let's see if we got enough light for this. I am going to show you something. Um, something comic, comic wise. Um, show you a comic that inspires me. You know, what I like about uh, comic books is um, not everybody has the same taste. Some of us, we get, you know, we get turned on by, um, or inspired, I should say, by certain um, some comics and creators. Um, certain things that need to be seen in comics that, that, that just kind of get us, get us going. Um, I think I'll show you a couple here. He said, I recently made the mistake of buying Silver Surfer Ghost Light, biggest waste of money. I think I heard about that one. Um, yeah, I, you know, I used to like Silver Surfer, but then I woke up and like, I realized that his, his power set, it makes him extremely, um, powerful. And then, but, um, but then his, his costume design is like... I don't know. Um, there's not much of one there. So he's just shiny and he has a surfboard. I, I mean, I, I, it feels like, it, you know, because I think he, unless I'm mistaken, I think he was a Kirby creation. Um, and so it feels like there was a deadline that, <laughs> that had to be made. Um, all right. So what we've got here is we've got Copperhead. Um, this one I had like, I was coming into, you know, coming back to comic books. I was um, swimming in in uh, in the, the comics gate circles, and uh, just listening, you know, watching, basically doing what you're doing, uh, Duck Bacon. Um, Duck Bacon says he's essentially naked. Yeah, yeah, Silver Surfer. He's he is, and I mean, that, hey, nothing wrong with it. I mean, it, it, but it just nothing. I mean, there's it, to me, it, it it's kind of boring. You know what I mean? Like. Um, when he's out there in the stars, he should be reflecting all the stars, so you can't really see him. So he's almost, you know, he's basically just invisible. So it's kind of like, like, okay, you know, when he was on Earth and having to deal with being, you know, human as uh, Norrin Rad, I, th I think those trials were more interesting to me as a character. Like, I, I would have much rather seen him kind of like, I like it when he would power down and have to mingle with human society. That that was interesting. But when when you start making things like so much larger than life and you lose that grounding, you lose me. And I'll tell you, while I'm on the subject, that's why I can't get into DC because it, it always feels like these characters are so much larger than life that I cannot, um, for whatever reason, I can't get into their humanity. I, I don't know. And maybe, I don't know. <laughs> anyway. So here's a, yeah, Copperhead. Um, it's an image comic. Uh, let's see, March 2015 here. Uh, Jay, I think it's Jay Fairber. I think is how it's pronounced. Um, and, you know, this one really inspired me. Um, so much so that I have a, a story coming up in, a, in an anthology called Out of Obscurity um, that I'm... I'm I've got a story in there with some other uh, some other people, uh, different you know different creative teams, um, and uh, and my story takes place on a train. Not not too different than this one, um, but yeah, it you know it did it, it. This this comic really inspired me. The colors are a little washed out, uh, which is fine, um, especially the kind of story that they're telling. Uh, the the title of the book. Uh, takes its name from the planet that that uh, that the, the people live on, um, and I think it's funny. Uh, apparently, this is kind of the trope: um, having a cop capybara, like this massive capybara uh, alien guy. You know, I mean, that's basically what he is. Uh, reminds me of the what's that? There's a there's a book, uh, indie book. It's a Something about a bunch of like space rodents or whatever. Um, so it must be a trope now. <laughs> I mean, that's, you know, 
but yeah this book is you know it's pretty it's pretty cool i like the story um all the different aliens and things um you know, my thing is with with my fiction i you know i'm, I'm i've put a uh, chrome dog i've said it uh, chrome dog and the the upcoming thunder horse story um i've uh, i've set both of them on a um on a planet that is not earth um earth is in the rear view so of like you know by like a couple thousand years um and so you know i have this chance to have this brand new planet ex you know experience this, this uh, uh, sandbox if you will um where i can kind of explore different cultures and do different things with them um try and do my best to keep everything grounded as much as i can um as far as you know character motivations and you know getting a sense that you know nothing's too grandiose and i'm not going to have to you know so far there's not space age technology um that's in your face everything feels more modern um but that planet's distant past had an advanced society that you know was pretty much wiped out and the people that live there now have no idea yeah i um that bacon says that art looks looks awesome yeah this book is it's a it's really cool um and this is you know this is the trade paperback it collects volume i think it collects issues one through six yeah one through one through six i believe um and I would love to collect all of them, to be honest. Um, oh, oh yeah, and that's something else too. Check this out. So, not only did I get this really cool, um, you know, this really cool graphic graphic novel presentation or uh, trade paperback. Oh, well, maybe it's five issues. Is it just five? Yeah, I guess it is. You know, one through five. Okay. Uh, I guess that's the cover. Yeah, that's the cover to five. Okay, so only one through five. All right. Um, but check this out. So this right here, this is this is their plot for issue number two. So when you go back to issue number two, you can actually follow the way in which they kind of, uh, you know, as Jay Faber, or if that's Faber, Faber, Faber. Um, as he was, you know, basically, you know, this was this was him plotting it out, and then um, I want to say in the introduction, or he has he has some material where he kind of talks about it. Um, I'm trying to remember anyway, but but yeah, just to see the process, um, that's kind of given me. Uh, kind of a, a heading in my own work so that as i'm working out uh chrome dog I, and I, I tell you i wish i could show you the out the um the uh, the plotting that i have for issue number two and issue number three but that's those are big spoilers because <laughs> i'm introducing stuff that um i think is going to blow a lot of people away <laughs> um and uh and I, I i can't wait um that's that's probably as a as a writer um it, you know and as a as a comic creative even though i'm i you know i'm just now learning how to draw um fortunately you know that's why that's why i have an artist you know i have a team dedicated to all these other jobs um but as i'm writing um the you know i have to have patience because <laughs> i want to get it all down you know i want to get it all out boy this music's really loud isn't it um, I know I've been going for almost an hour here. Let's see. You know, I wish I wish uh, Streamyards had it to where like if you don't have anyone in chat, they don't count the time against you. <laughs> oh, dare to dream, I guess. Um, because I'm a freeloader right now, so I only get so many hours per month. Um, that's wild. Um, that's one thing I have to say to, to about DC is their character design is so cool. Um, I like the character designs. Um, they're, they're just so fun and, and just, they're just cool. It's just when, when it's time to kind of like get into the story and this one is a dark one. Um, 
because I mean, we're, you know, we're over here, we're over in Africa here. And these are, you know, these are these kid soldiers that are raised to like kill people and stuff like it's and rape and all kind of like, I mean, it's, yeah, it's some bad stuff. I mean, you know, granted it's, it, you know, and they, they don't really, they don't really show all that, but they, they definitely describe, um, situations and you know allude to certain situations where yeah it's definitely going on um but but anyway um this one here i like it i like to look at it because the colors are on point i think uh you know high quality uh production value we've got uh where's it at? yeah art art t-bird or art t-bear um as one of the inkers so i like i kind of like looking at his work um you know a lot of times the inkers don't get they don't get enough love <laughs> that's one of the reasons I, I prefer black and white because i mean <laughs> it's pencils and inks baby um you know and color has a tendency to hide uh, detail, and um, but if you if you get a if you get a solid anchor man, like I'm gonna tell you, um, uh, his name on Twitter is Draw, Drawing Luchador. Um, his name's uh, Kevin McDougal, but his Twitter handle is Drawing Luchador. He's he's my artist for. Um, for the the story that i have coming up in that that out of obscurity um anthology and he um he does phenomenal line work in uh and the shadowing the black and white like i would have loved to have kept that story just black and white uh, but um you know the book pretty much demanded to be to be in color which i'm i'm a little miffed because somebody else i think is doing one of doing their story in black and white oh i'm sorry it's okay hold on so doug bacon says i've been focusing on colors lately and then mcdoodle no mcdougal uh let me see i'm gonna see if i can drop his um bear with me uh exit exit um I'll grab I'll grab his Twitter that way I'll throw it in there give him a follow you know see what he's got going on um, and I may even if I can find it um, I'll even I'll see if I can uh, link his art station um, let's see here drawing luchador here we go Kevin McDougal McDougal um, and his son his son is the colorist for my story um and he does he does some pretty pretty fun work as well but that's him kevin mcdougall um yeah let me see if i can i'm gonna it's not too much trouble i'm gonna try to log into art station and throw that up there too that way you can follow him on art station if if you know if you have a art station uh, log in or whatnot, but at least you can follow the link and check it out. Um, oh my gosh, what happened to the music? <laughs> there he is, Kevin McDougal. It, I, I guess when my when my computer is, um, wait a minute, it says I'm not following him. Well, I am now. Daggum it. <laughs> So there he is uh, I'll pin that in there too so yeah this is his art station uh, but his black and white uh, work and I mean the texture of the hair like this guy he he knows what he's doing um, and I, I really I've got I've got stories that I would love to level up and get to the point where I can draw you know do decent layouts and even like decent roughs um, so that all I have to do is say, you know, here, uh, and just turn, turn, uh, Kevin loose on my pages. Um, 
because I, you know, I have I have other characters that uh, in the in the the Chrome Dog universe, as it were. Uh, here, why not? Have you? Uh, hey, Duck, have you seen? Um, have you had a chance to see uh, Blood Honey yet? I don't want to. I don't really want to spoil it, but I can definitely show you. Um, Ethan was very kind one day when um, I was watching the stream or whatnot. Somebody had had mentioned something about um, about Blood Honey, and uh, and what he did was he he put it up as a he had some some dings and dent, dented copies, and he put them up on um, as a flash sale on eBay. And so I was like. I got to get one of those because uh, I knew there'd be no other way to get one. So this is the ultimate edition, um, which, you know, pretty cool. You know, um, I, you know, I'm, I'm halfway tempted. I know, I know it sounds like sacrilege, but I'm halfway tempted to go around this thing with like a, a Sharpie or felt tip and like line, line everything in just, just because, but I don't know. I don't, I don't ever plan on getting rid of it. That's for sure. Because, I mean, you want to talk about line work and the letters, you know, Eric Weathers. This book, this right here is what, what caused me to hire Eric Weathers for Chrome Dog. Because I'm like, dude, what? <laughs> this is awesome. Um, and then I think Kyle Ritter is on colors. And see how he does it, right? So he comes in here and he does, like, the way he does his credits... It feels like a movie. So he's got that. And then over here we got Colors by Kyle Ritter. And Letters by Eric Weathers. You know, it's like, that's so fun. Um, yeah, okay. So here, down here at the bottom, he's got his name, uh, Van Skyver, and then Ritter, and then Le uh, Weathers. So. But yeah, very cool. Very neat. Especially cool to find, um, to see uh, the origin story of Cyber Frog and how it was an accident that a frog was chosen. That's, that's pretty darn cool. <laughs> um, could have been a human uh, or was supposed to be a human, but, um, you know, but, but the, the womb the womb mother or whatever the the cybernetic this this machine thing was uh strapped for time so you know it was kind of like the first <laughs> the first organic thing was like yep yeah. and then uh turned turned him into a um cyber frog you know and of course there was a salamander not not far away so he did this the, she did the same thing to um, to create um, Salamandroid, and he's like, "Are you my mother?" <laughs> so cool, but um, but yeah. Yeah, and this one, like you know, it's, and I tell you, I don't know what it is about comic books, man, but. Whenever I get into a comic book, by the time I by the time I get to the end, it's just getting good, and it's like move on to the next one. I'm just like, what? And then I go to read that next one, and, and then it's just getting good, and then it's over, and it's like, wait a minute, you know, I, it's. <laughs> and so I guess I'm carry I'm carrying some of that tradition um, with me in the in the issues that I'm producing. Oh, maybe. <laughs> But then again, you know, you have to ask yourself, you know, if you sat down with a book, with a comic book, would you really want it to be this this long if it was a one single book? You know, I mean, I tried reading, reading manga. This is not manga uh, or manga. Um, this is actually just an anthology. Uh, it's a crime anthology from Alterna Comics. But um, yeah, I. Yeah. <laughs> not really sure what else to say about that um but yeah well that was that's it's been my show and i, I really appreciate you uh stopping by 
um, Duck and, and everyone else that, that's going to potentially listen to this on the replay. I hope, I hope I've not been too um, boring. <laughs> Um, I'm still, you know, still trying to find my, find my feet in this space. Also still trying to figure out if, um, you know, if live streaming is a good use of my time. Um, so far doesn't seem like it is. Um, if I'm being honest and maybe it's because I'm not, you know, I'm not a YouTuber. Um, I'm not an artist yet. You know, and I'm certainly, you know, we're talking, I'm, I'm going to have to really, um, you know, really bust my hump to try to get to, um, to any, any, um, semblance of, of what's, um, what could be considered good as an artist. Um, cause I'm a writer first. Um, but I, I just don't want to only be a writer. You know, um, I definitely want to help the process along so that my artists, all they have to do is kind of, you know, read the script, look at my layouts and then just go to town and have fun with it. You know, um, and maybe in the end we, you know, we come up with something fun, um, that people will enjoy. You know, I like, I like to think of us. Uh, comic creation. I, th I like to think of it as like a band coming together and creating a hit song. Um, you know, that's always the hope is to try to, you know, get everything to sound right and everything clicks. And when it clicks, um, people want to, uh, you know, buy it or, you know, or enjoy it, I should say. Um, and I think, you know, that's why certain bands are more popular than others. Um, but, uh, but anyway, I could probably ramble all day, so I'll just leave you with this. Um, just take care and, um, and enjoy our wild America.